The clock is ticking, and a young man seems to be giving instructions to another young man. First, you only get 12 hours. Second, follow my lead and change nothing. Third, past or future, let them be. Cheng Xiaoshui and Lu Guang take their work seriously at Time Photo Studio, a small photo agency shop located in the corner of a busy city. The two use superpowers to dive into their clients' photos one by one. The landlady comes and rushes into the shop with a picture, but Cheng messes around with her and refuses to help her. Lu Guang, a serious-looking guy on the other hand, offers help. The landlady, Kiao Ling, tells Lu that a client wants him to get core financial data on a company named Vicky Games to expose its fraudulent activities. They've got exactly two days. The only problem is, this data is supervised by the CEO of the company only, who never leaves his system. His assistant, Emma, is the only person who has a shot to see the data. The landlady shows Lou Emma's most recent picture taken the day before yesterday. If this doesn't work, she asks him to go back to the last week since the financial data may not be up to date. Lu takes a look and says they've got only one chance. So Cheng Xiaoxi enters the photograph in Emma's body. Cheng is sexually assaulted by Emma's employer at Vicky Games before returning home. Lu Guang and Cheng have a conversation while resting in their individual beds, and Lu Guang warns Cheng to be cautious and avoid doing anything that would alter the timeline. Cheng ignores this advice and sends Emma's supervisor a text message. The next morning, Cheng makes a deliberate error that causes Emma to be treated unfairly and ultimately fired. He eventually feels bad about it and struggles with it deeply. Despite this, Cheng lets himself get spanked as Emma, allowing him to see the knowledge he seeks. In the present, a depressed Emma enters her room and discovers the note she wrote to her parents, prompting a scenario in which Emma and her parents prepare to board a train to see each other. A man offers Emma a ride to the station while Cheng mulls over the consequences of his actions. While Cheng is distracted by Kiao, Lu Guang checks his phone and discovers that Emma has died. It's a new day and a new task. The mission of this task is to get a special seasoning recipe. The people in the picture, Lu Jie and Lin Zhen, used to run a food chain together. One was responsible for the management while the other was responsible for the kitchen. They had been partners for 10 years, but Lin Zhen had kept the famous soup recipe to herself. Yu believes that her partner betrayed her and started her own business with that secret recipe. Now to get back at her, she plans to obtain the recipe. Chang, while looking at the pictures, wonders why Yu and Lin broke their friendship of many years, and asks Lu if they'll break up too if they disagree on something. The two mess around and then get back to the job. Chen goes into the picture as Yu and tries to look for clues in the past pictures taken by the ladies, but fails to find any clues. After a tiring day of serving customers, Lin decides to make noodles for the two of them. This is Cheng's chance to learn about the secret recipe, but someone knocks at the door and yet again he has to attend to it since it's a rule not to change anything in the past. After several fruitless attempts to find the secret recipe, Cheng realizes that the case for Yu and Lin's breakup was a difference in ideology about how to run the noodle store. Yu wanted to expand whilst Lin wanted to open a little noodle shop. After piecing the clues together, Cheng also discovers the secret ingredient, which was a fragrant flower from Yu's birthplace. Yu used to make the noodles in the girls' dorm room using this ingredient. Once Yu, from the present, learns about the truth, she sets out to meet Lin to mend their friendship, and the episode ends with the two smiling and hugging. Pretty wholesome. A body of a woman was found in the river in September. Initially, it appeared to be a suicide case, but the police found some new clues. This could be a case of homicide. The police warn all female citizens to be watchful and protect themselves. Kiao is hearing this all on the radio while she's on her morning run. Suddenly, a man tries to approach her, but Lu Guang intercepts. Turns out this man is Chen Xiao, an architect, who heard about Cheng Xiaoxi and Lu Guang's abilities and seeks them out to make amends for his regrets from his last basketball game. Chen Xiao is a bench player on a school basketball team and a photographer at the school newspaper. The photo given to them is the photo before the last game. It was the day when Chen lost the game and the love of his life had a fight with his mom. All he wants to do is have a few words with them and redeem himself. Chang wonders if talking to the people will change the past, but Lu says everything will be fine. During the game, Chang serves as both a backup player and a photographer, until an untimely flash allows the opponent to get away with intentionally hurting the team's best player. Chang is brought in as a substitute and he immediately takes over the situation and even plays well. 
Cheng Xiaoxi's actions, however, may end up changing the past and altering the future, which Lu Guang warns Cheng of on several occasions, particularly when it comes to changing the game's outcome. A player from the opponent team messes with Cheng and breaks his glasses. The coach calls out his behavior, after which the rival player apologizes. Cheng cashes the opportunity and signals his teammate to toss the ball, and he makes a three-pointer. Lu asks him to stop and end it, but he keeps playing, which changes the game's outcome. Lu Guang explains to him that the world in the picture represents the past. Anything you change can wrap the space and time and rewrite the future, but there is an exception. At some point in time, there is an important node. Even if you accidentally change all the previous course, but if there's no change in the result of what happened at that frame, then nothing changes. However, if the important node event is changed, then all the past after that can be rewritten. After the game is over, Cheng continues the task of delivering the messages. Everyone is amazed at Cheng's last shot, which allowed the team to win. Cheng suddenly starts having flashbacks of what really happened at the game. Turns out Cheng Xiao's camera flash distracted one of the players. He got hit by the opponent and fell to the ground, which gave the rival team a chance to score the goal and win the game. Cheng wonders if he has changed the past by altering one important node, which is the game's outcome. He tries reaching out to Lu Guang for reassurance. Lu Guang tells that Cheng has rewritten the node of the last event, but the final outcome hasn't changed. The gym's coach tells Cheng the leaders have decided to take the basketball court down and rebuild, even if the team wins. Cheng delivers the client's message to the captain. The two meet the captain's sister, and the three of them travel back to their homes together. After that, Cheng takes the sister on a walk and delivers the second message. After returning home and resolving a quarrel with Chen Xiao's mother, he delivers the final message. Cheng quickly discovers that this operation is aimed at an unforgivable memory, an earthquake that will kill Chen's friends and family. Lu Guang warns Chen that whatever he does, he can't change the past, and that Chen's friends and family are already dead. And if he does try to change anything, this could affect their present life. Lu Guang asks Cheng not to tell anyone about the upcoming earthquake that's about to hit them as this can cause massive chaos. Cheng Xiaoxi rushes to the captain's house and asks him to leave with his family immediately and leave the town. The captain assumes he's talking about the game after the hearing which Cheng tells him about the school's plan for demolishing the gym. This sparks the captain's rage and he asks Chen Xiaoxi to leave. After this, he reveals that an earthquake will hit the town at 8.30 p.m., but this information does more harm than helping them. Nobody's really worried about the earthquake, they're arguing with each other instead. Old ladies from the neighbors ask Chen Xiaoxi where did he hear the news about the earthquake. He panics and he said he read it in a magazine. Everyone laughs and Cheng flees from the place and cries in anguish. He requests Lu Guang if he can save Chen's mother. Lu Guang agrees and asks him to follow his directions. Lu Guang tells Cheng his action will make the past even more unpredictable. Cheng Xiaoxi rushes to the mother's house and tells her there is a rumor in town about an earthquake and asks her to pack. The agreement Lu Guang made with Cheng wasn't really genuine. He recalls that the mountain collapse buried half the town and that Chen was saved because he was sitting in the dining room. Cheng Xiaoxi and the mother hide under the table and wait for the earthquake to happen. Chen's mom says she forgot something and decides to move away from the table. Cheng asks her to stay while he gets the stuff. The clock hits 8.30 and the earthquake shakes the town and destroys everything and everyone. Unconscious Chen wakes up and asks Chen Xiao's mom if she's fine. She's severely injured. Lu Guang suggests Cheng to exit if it's too hard for him. Meanwhile, Chen Xiao's mom tries to comfort him and tells him to go after his dreams and sings him the song she used to sing when Chen Xiao was young. After returning to the present, Cheng realizes that Lu Guang anticipated this and punches him in the face, then falls down to his knees and cries his heart out. Chen Xiao visits the Photoshop and asks if he can develop some photos from his old camera. This old camera was the item that Chen Xiao's mother wanted to grab at the time they were hiding under the table from the earthquake. Cheng Xiaoxi and Lu Guang inform Qiao Ling that they will be taking a break from photographing. A police officer arrives and inquires about the mystical business in progress. A husband and wife running a cafe end up losing their son on a busy day at the cafe. Cheng Xiaoxi and Lu Guang still aren't ready to start working again. 
While they're having a chat, a man named Jiao Li arrives and wants their help. After learning that he's a policeman, Kiao Ling shushes him away, saying that they're running a legit business. Just when the policeman is about to leave, a man walks inside the shop looking for help as he has heard they can see the past in their photos. He wants them to help find his son, Dodo, who has been missing for three years. The policeman tells the man that what he heard about these folks is wrong. It's just another scam and reassures him that he won't let his child's case close. Later on, Kiao Ling admits that she saw Dodo walking away with someone while she was at his parents' shop three years ago. She saw the kid with someone and wanted to tell this to the boy's father but hesitated, and that she regretted not stopping the person and asking where he was taking the kid. After hearing this story, the duo is compelled to do something about the situation. They contact Brother Lang to tell him that they are ready to help. Officer Zhao Li finds out that Brother Lang came in to get the CCTV footage from the day of the kidnapping, and other officers refuse to help. But one of the officers make an exception and send him 15 seconds of the video privately. They search for clues using the CCTV footage. Cheng travels back in time as himself thanks to CCTV footage. He runs into Xiao Ling from the past while following the kidnapper. Xiao Ling and her friend are surprised to see Cheng, who was supposed to be on a vacation with Lu Guang. He runs away without interacting with them since conversing with Chao Ling can alter the timeline. Because of this, Cheng ends up losing track of the kidnapper. The blind spots of the camera limit Lu's views. Cheng looks everywhere, but it seems the kidnapper has fled the scene. We're in the present now. Chao Ling speaks with the father and informs him that the team wasn't able to spot the kidnapper. She also admits that she saw Dodo with someone, but didn't stop him and hid this information from everyone. Mr. Ling consoles Chao Ling and says that he and her team had given her hope and he will continue searching for his son even if it takes 20 years. Cheng Xiaoxi tells the father they would like to help him further. Lu Guang asks the father if they have any other photos from the day of the kidnapping. The father goes through his phone to see if he has more photos. Lu spots one photo of action figures taken by Dodo that might lead them somewhere. Cheng Xiaoxi dives into the photo, this time as Dodo to look for clues. Someone throws a ball that catches Dodo's attention. Cheng Xiaoxi turns around and picks up the ball. The woman standing afar calls herself Auntie and asks the boy to return the ball. Cheng Xiaoxi wonders why the ball smells so good. He sniffs it and becomes dizzy, and agrees to go with the woman who calls Dodo her nephew. Cheng Xiaoxi becomes unconscious and falls asleep. When he wakes up, Lu Guang asks him to look for clues. Cheng finds out they are in the Red Sun Hostel, which is outside the city. Lu Guang asks Chen to look for a wallet or purse to find her identification documents. Chen successfully finds her ID, but the woman wakes up. Cheng uses his skills and martial arts to beat her up. Following the reunion, the police chief asks how Cheng gained access to the CCTV footage and requests assistance with a serial murder investigation. Lu Guang examines the case images, one of which shows Emma's body. Lu Guang hides the photo before Cheng sees it, replacing it with a picture of the killer. The officer explains to the duo this case might be critical because the suspect is really sneaky and that they suspect it's a homicide. Lu Guang dismisses the case by saying they might not be able to help. Chao Ling brings in another client. It's Zhu Shanshan who was also a member of the Time Photo Studio Gang. She seeks assistance in determining what her close friend and possible love interest, Dong Yi from University Days, said to her when she was drunk. Zhu Shanshan wanted to pursue higher studies but decides to stay because of Dong Yi and waits for him to say the words, which apparently never come. From their farewell night together, Xu Shanshan only has two photos with Dong Yi. Xu Shanshan drinks a little too much and doesn't remember the last thing Dong Yi says to her. She didn't have the heart to ask the boy what he said in person. Now she wants the gang to help. Cheng agrees to jump into the photo as Xu Shanshan messes around a bit, sings at the karaoke, and drinks too much. Just when Dong Yi is about to tell him something, he spots a man who looks similar to the guy in the photo shown by the officer. Cheng pursues the man down an alleyway, fearing he is the serial killer. He plans to take his photo and look for him later on. It turned out that the man was not the serial killer, but someone Xu had recently turned down. Although Cheng gets distracted and couldn't hear what Dong Yi said, Lu Guang manages to write everything down. In the present day, Lu Guang tells Xu about what Dong said to her. Dong Yi doesn't want to leave and wants Xu Shan Shan to accompany him to the next morning as he gives an interview. The group receives an unusual text message from Xu Shan Shan. Xu Shanshan doesn't show up to support Dong Yi either. Try saying that ten times fast. Concerned, Xiao Ling dials Xu's number and is astonished to hear a strange man's voice on the other end delivering a cryptic message. I will show up as promised. 
The gang fears this man could be the serial killer. Lu Guang decides to go to the police station. Lu Guang is able to identify the killer's license plate by entering the killer's CCTV photo. Lu Guang then notices Chang in the photograph and realizes Chang is the only one in the photograph. When the police chief goes to see Liu Min, the main suspect and owner of the vehicle, he discovers that he is paralyzed as a result of a recent car accident. Because Liu Min is in the hospital, he has an alibi for the crime. In the photo, Cheng is seen getting into the trunk of Liu Min's car as Liu and Emma enter. Liu travels to a remote spot and begins strangling Emma while shouting her name. When Cheng learns this name, he realizes his acts as Emma altered her fate and led her to this moment in time when she's about to be murdered. Cheng screams in agony and just as Liu Min is about to open the trunk, Cheng vanishes. Cheng returns in front of an enraged Lu Guang and a stunned Xiaoling at the Time Photo Studio. Cheng, defeated, admits he didn't change anything and realizes his acts were futile. He accepts responsibility for Xiao's inability to see Dodo, as he was the cause of her distraction. Xiao is taken aback by Cheng's talent, but she dismisses it in order to check if the police have made any progress. Emma could not have been murdered, according to the police, because CCTV evidence shows her strolling alone on a bridge. Lu Guang discovers that something happens to Xu in a photo taken before her abduction, and Cheng mentally prepares himself for what can happen if he enters the frame. In the meantime, Dong Li awaits Xu's arrival for the interview. Cheng visits the Time Photo Studio and has dialogues with himself and his friends, learning some of their true feelings about him, both favorable and bad. The backstory of the gang's friendship is revealed, as the fight between Shu and the attacker approaches. In the present, the same assailant enters the Time Photo Studio at night. Cheng intervenes to prevent the killer from killing Shu, while Lu Guang rushes to the development room and locks the killer inside. Cheng strikes a deal with the killer in the photo, then returns to the present, where he meets up with the killer in the development room. The attacker who came to the studio was part of Cheng's plan. Cheng planned to face the killer and offer him a deal by giving him a hint the next morning morning in exchange for Xu's protection. Lu Guang is on board with the strategy. The attacker accepts the deal and in the present, he is confined in the development room with Cheng. Cheng enters images of the attacker's victims while the two struggle. It was Liu Min who was behind all this. He is captured by the authorities. Authorities examine Liu Min. Liu Min speaks about his buddy who carried out the murder. Cheng requests Emma's CCTV footage and uses it to try to save her. Following Cheng's near-fatal discovery in Liu's trunk, Liu was convinced he had killed Emma and went to the hospital. Emma regains consciousness and, while in a coma, causes Liu's car to crash. Emma makes it out alive and tries to text her parents, who are waiting for her to return home and discover her phone is damaged. Cheng talks Emma out of jumping over the bridge. He introduces himself and tells Emma about his ability to visit the past through photos. Crying, Emma asks if Cheng can help her start over. She recalls her past and remembers how Zhu tricked her into helping Liu Min steal money from her father's company. The authorities get confused about Liu Min's statement. The doctors say he has sound mental health. He doesn't have schizophrenia or multiple personalities disorder. They also wonder how he went to the studio if he's paralyzed. Meanwhile, drunk Liu Min calls someone out, asking him to help. As Xiao arrives with apples and a knife, Liu Guang wonders how it's possible to stop death since it's an important node. Suddenly, Emma's eyes turn red as she says, I didn't realize there was a witness and falls off the bridge. Lu Guang quickly realizes that Liu Min is just a puppet, and the real culprit is someone else. Liu Min's eyes turn red and he can suddenly walk again. Kiao Ling's eyes do the same thing in the present. She ends up stabbing Lu Guang. It doesn't take long for Cheng and Lu Guang to realize that someone else has the ability to possess spirits. Cheng returns to the present and finds Lu Guang bleeding. The possessed Xiao mocks Cheng and says this is your punishment for breaking the rules of the game. Now the game has been reset. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.